So what about another item, which is white bread? And the reason we put white bread up here is because it is the most basic good of most households. It is the thing people will buy week after week after week. And what you can see is that white bread pricing has increased in the past year by 51%. You can't afford toast. Your minimum wage has gone up by 3.5%, but the price of a white sliced loaf has gone up 51%. That's why when someone tells you that the cost of living crisis has gone away, you don't feel like it has because the goods that you're buying on a day-to-day -day basis are rising more quickly than the headline rate of inflation. and a warm welcome to episode 26 of Locked Out with Craig Rennie. By day, I'm the economist and director of policy at the New Zealand Council of Trade Unions. But by night, this podcast looks at the numbers in New Zealand and asks the hard questions so that you can too. We hope that you're enjoying the show and what we do here at Locked Out. If you like the analysis that you hear on the show and think that others would do too, then please recommend us to your friends or even your enemies. Also, Give us a recommendation wherever you get your podcasts. It really helps get the word out. Here at Locked Out, we're always interested in what our viewers and listeners want to know. If it's making you say, did Sir Jim Bulger really support fair pay agreements? Then you can be no doubt we're asking it to. So get in touch. I'm on X, Blue Sky and on Substack. We want to hear how we can help you better understand what's really going on and how you can help navigate the numbers being thrown around by politicians and experts alike. Now at this point, you may be asking yourself, why on earth is there a QR code on the screen here? Now the New Zealand Podcast Awards are currently taking nominations for Listener Choice Awards. And if you want to nominate Locked Out or any other BHN program, please head to newzealandpodcastawards.com forward slash nominate, or just follow the QR code on the screen. Now today, I wanna to talk to you about this money and why it doesn't seem to be going as far as it used to. Now, we've all heard the story there has been a cost of living crisis. We've all heard the story that, you know, cost of living was out of control. We needed to do things about it. That's why we needed to cut government spending. That's why interest rates needed to go up. But the thing is, we were told at the election, we were going to have a laser-like focus on the cost of living. We were going to have a government, finally, that was going to grapple with the hard questions so that we could have inflation lower, interest rates lower, and we could get back to normal economics. So I was reading back over the past budget documents because, you know, I'm a very sad person. And I came across from Nicola Willis, this lovely statement in uh, the, the budget speech that she gave. And she, Nicola Willis said of inflation, there's no magic wand to wish away the price rises baked in uh, in recent years. But getting inflation and interest rates under control has been essential to achieving this economic recovery. That's why I always take pause to celebrate that since our government came into office, inflation has returned to normal levels, resulting in a 200 basis point reduction in interest rates. Now, even then, since then we've had more interest rate deductions, 50 basis points at the last turn. But does inflation feel like it's gone away? Do you feel like you're losing your mind because every time you go to the shops, the cost of living doesn't seem to have disappeared? Do you feel like inflation really hasn't ended for you? And for many people, it hasn't. And that's because inflation is a weird and wonderful thing. We measure inflation via a thing called the Consumer Price Index. Now, the Consumer Price Index is a basket. It's a basket of 598 individual items in that basket. Everything um, from uh, hi-fi systems um, to parts for your car um, through to guttering for the house, um, a range of different things. But you don't purchase those every day. 
You don't purchase laptops every day, which are inside this API. Um, you don't purchase mobile phones that are inside the CPI every day. But the CPI assumes that you do. And as a consequence, your interest rate can feel very different to everybody else's interest rate. But we have a phrase for this in economics. We call it about salience. Some items in the interest rate basket that you purchase all the time influence your view of what interest rates are, of inflation is, and how important it is to you. So instead of just taking Nicola Willis's um, view of this and saying, well, that must be fine. We must have gone back to normal inflation at 2%. Inflation is currently 2.7%. So you would think, well, prices must be coming down. But they're not. And let me take you an example of what that means for a minimum wage worker. So today we had the selected price index. Now the selected price index looks at a range of prices which make up parts of the overall consumer price index. And we get that monthly as opposed to the consumer price index, which we only get quarterly. Now, when we look at the first chart here on the screen, we can see rent versus the minimum wage. And what we can see here is that the rent for, this is the median rent across New Zealand, um, that's gone up at roughly twice the rate of the minimum wage. Why is that important? Because for most minimum wage earners, rent is the most, is the biggest expense that they have. So when that's going up twice the rate of their wages, that's eating all of the available room and more of their minimum wage. But that's actually quite a low rate of rent change since recently. So let's look at another one. Let's look at electricity pricing and the minimum wage. Now, we've all known that electricity pricing um, has gone up, but did you know that since the election, electricity prices have gone up 16%, but the minimum wage has only gone up 3.5%. So again, that rent is going up faster than the minimum wage, 3.5%. It's now eating all of the spare room, all of the spare income that you might have had because you've got to pay the rent. You've got to pay the electricity price. And if you're unlucky enough to own gas, gas has now gone up 22%. Again, the minimum wage has gone up 3.5%. So again, that idea of salience, you're not losing your mind if you think that inflation hasn't gone away because the things that you buy all of the time are going up much more quickly than the official rate of inflation is going up. So let me give you a different example. This is food pricing. Food pricing has gone up at twice the rate of, of the minimum wage. But if you look carefully, you can see it really got out of here, out of hand, at the start of 2025. Food pricing really started to accelerate in just this calendar year. It's moved much more quickly than the minimum wage just in 2025. And that's not just food prices. Let's look at something, a common everyday purchase, beef mints. If you want to buy a mixed bag bowl, if you want to make chili con carne, you want to make a lasagna, you buy beef mints. Only you don't, because it's now gone up 25% since the election. Your minimum wage has gone up 3.5%. And if you say to yourself, well, I'm not on the minimum wage quick. I don't worry about this. Well, the average labor cost index increase in wages is 2.4%. So again, you're not catching up with food pricing, with the purchase of regular goods pricing. And it's not just beef mints. This is cheese. Cheese pricing has gone up 27% since the election. And again, if you look at where it's gone up more quickly than the minimum wage, you can see it's at the start of this year. When Ms. Willis was telling us that CPI and inflation is now officially under control. Again, all of these prices starting to rise faster than the price of wages were rising. But what about milk? We're a country, when New Zealand is, the, is Saudi Arabia of milk. We produce, what, the amount of milk we produce impacts global dairy prices. We are awash with milk in this country. Yet, Milk prices have gone up 
in New Zealand, the minimum wage has gone up three and a half percent. But because you're buying milk every day, or many people buy milk every day, it's influencing your perception of inflation. So what about another item, which is white bread? And the reason we put white bread up here is because it is the most basic good of most households. It is the thing people will buy week after week after week. And what you can see is that white bread pricing has increased in the past year by 51%. You can't afford toast. Your minimum wage has gone up by 3.5%, but the price of a white sliced loaf has gone up 51%. Now, your rent has already squeezed all of your spare income. Your electricity has squeezed whatever spare income you had left. Your gas pricing has squeezed um, whatever remaining income you had left. Food pricing is going up at twice the rate of your wages. And the individual items within there, the cheapest items within there, are now rising much more quickly. Again, it's squeezing your perception of inflation. That's why when someone tells you that the cost of living crisis has gone away, you don't feel like it has because the goods that you're buying on a day-to-day -day basis are rising more quickly than the headline rate of inflation. So what about, you know, if you can't afford bacon, can you perhaps form a, you know, if you can't afford toast, can you perhaps form a, a bacon sandwich? Nope, we can't because bacon's gone up by twice the rate of inflation. As frankly have most groceries, groceries generally have gone up by again twice the rate of the minimum wage. So your perception that the minimum wage and the perception that wages generally aren't rising with the true cost of living, which is the things that you're buying on a day-to-day -day basis, is absolutely correct. And Miss Willis' statement at the beginning of this that inflation is under control might be true of the headline rate, all 598 items in that basket. But because you're not buying that basket on a day-to-day -day basis, inflation doesn't appear to be falling to you. And so if you think to yourself, well, if nothing else, I can sit down and have a cup of tea. Things can get better. Well, you can't because tea is going up twice as quickly as the minimum wage. So if you're a higher income earner, and you think to yourself, things are getting better, that's probably because you're buying more and more of the items that aren't basic items. You're going back to buying luxury items. But if you're a minimum wage worker, if you're a low income worker, the cost of living challenges haven't disappeared. And in fact, the cost of living challenges, when you're just trying to get by on the basics, the data from the selected price index today is telling us that those basics are rising more quickly than general inflation. Why is that important? What it's telling us is that inflation is being borne most by the poorest. If you're on a fixed income, or if you're on a very low income, if you're on a benefit, you don't have any headroom to begin with. So you're only buying the basic items, but those basic items, as we've just shown, are rising much more quickly than the minimum wage or inflation generally. What we're seeing here is that inflation is hurting the poorest the most, but we're not seeing wage increases benefiting the poorest the most. Overall, wages are rising by 2.4%, which is well below inflation with 2.7%. And 51% of New Zealanders got a pay rise last year of less than 2%. Workers and their wages are going backwards. Your dollars aren't stretching as far, and you're being asked to believe that inflation isn't increasing. Whereas your day-to-day -day experience of inflation is that it is going up, and that's because the goods that you're buying all the time are going up much more quickly than general inflation. Now, if we get rid of that chart on the screen, then one of the things um, we can talk about is also what else has been happening in the economy that should give us some pause for thought at the moment, because we're not far away. We're only about eight weeks away from the half year economic and fiscal update where we'll get another 
set of um, glances at the government accounts, another set of forecasts from the Treasury, and we'll get to see again how much more delayed the recovery from the 2024 recession has become. And if we look at the data um, that's been produced by Business New Zealand recently, then we can see that the Purchasing Managers Index um, is, uh, for manufacturing is falling. Um, we can see the Performance of Services Index or the PSI Index is falling. Um, both of those things contracting suggest that the economy hasn't recovered from its 0.9% um, reduction in the last quarter and that GDP is likely could to continue to be either very subdued um, or may even fall again. And the latest data from the Reserve Bank, what's called the now cast of GDP or Kiwi GDP, that's starting to sink again. Um, and on its current basis, um, any growth that we have will not be enough to get us back out of that 0.9% fall in GDP in the last quarter. And if you get if you're worried about sort of, you know, these numbers being thrown around, just remember this. We're currently 1.3% smaller as an economy, as the size of the economy, the amount that we produce every year, than we were at the election. Despite that cost of living, despite that promises about getting growing for growth, about getting back on track, about that laser-like focus on the cost of living, the economy's smaller, inflation is rising, and for those essential items, those things that you know you buy day to day, they're going up more quickly again. Now, this is being felt by people in terms of whether or not they're going out and spending any money, because we can tell they're not because credit card spending fell in the last set of data. We're telling people, we're seeing that people have no confidence in the economy because more and more people are leaving. We now have record out migration of Kiwis. We lose a New Zealander permanently out of the country in a, every, a little over every seven minutes. Now, next week, we'll get the Consumer Price Index for the full broad range of things. And it might well tell us that inflation as a big number, as the top number, is currently under control and that we don't need to worry about things and that interest rates can keep coming down. The reason for the show today is so that you don't lose your minds. When you hear inflation's under control, but that you go to the supermarkets and the prices are all way above where they were last year, you're not wrong. It's the way we collect the data, which is giving you a false impression of your real cost of living. The real cost of living is not buying a mobile phone every week or a hi-fi every week. The real cost of living is the day-to-day -day prices that you face at the shops, at the petrol pump, every time you turn the lights on in the house. And they're all rising much more quickly than inflation. And it's why it's so important that wage rises meet that price and not just the CPI price. So when you look at the data, when you ask yourself, what are we doing? Where's the economy going? Are we back on track? Next week, we'll get some CPI data. Hopefully, um, we'll have an emergency lockup, well, a, a podcast from the lockup. I'll be able to tell you all the data um, on Monday morning as to what's really going on. Um, thank you so much for joining us here on the Locked Out podcast. We hope you found it in parts maddening and in parts enlightening. And again, increasingly maddening. And if you've enjoyed the show, please give us a review or a recommendation on YouTube, Spotify, or wherever you download. And again, if you look um, at the QR code um, in the corner and you want to nominate Locked Out or any other of the BHN programs, head to New Zealand Podcast Awards forward slash nominate, or just follow the QR code on the screen. Locked Out looks forward to talking more with you next week. Don't work too hard. Goodbye.